Hello, beautiful people. I just am here to create a writer of the Honesty Sis newsletter, a bi weekly newsletter geared towards millennials who are truly trying to get their shit together. And I am here for another daily motivational video where we use the tarot to become the alchemist of our lives and to teach us how to become spiritual beings. A little bit about me I do not just use the tarot, I use God and Cusses in the same sentence, and I may mispronounce some things. But if it does not stop Charlemagne and God, it ain't gonna stop me. It ain't gonna stop me. All right, y'all, let's get back into it. And so the last message, we were talking a lot about trying to make change, trying to, um, you know, just trying to really uh, make true transformations in our life, engine number 41. And so I'm going to go into um, these I am everything. These are This is an affirmation deck. These are really good cards to have if you are um, really trying to change your life. Um and the reason why I say that, matter of fact, not even that you're trying to change your life. Yeah, I feel like, you know, like say, control delete. Say, for example, that you are nervous. Like, say you grew up, like most black people, like tarot cards are evil. You're not supposed to be doing that type of stuff. Really start with your affirmation deck. Um, these are very inexpensive. You can travel with them. You can, you know, you can keep them around. And they have, like, really good messages. And the way to use affirmations is that whenever you find yourself in a vicious, like, thought cycle, say you're just thinking the worst case scenario, or you're just, you know, find yourself just feeling anxious, you can just take yourself back to these, to the, to the message of the card. So if you actually want to keep a card with you or keep, you know, keep the deck on you, whenever you find yourself in moments of, um, you know, just panic, you can pull these out shuffle them and say that message to yourself or if you don't have the cards you can just say whatever that affirmation is so say say i'm open i'm open to i'm open to uh, a new possibility a new way of thinking i'm open to a uh, change i'm open to the universe helping me and seeing me through like just saying some statements to yourself you can also use tapping as you're doing this even though i'm very scared right now i'm open to a solution to get through this problem even though i'm scared right now i'm open to god helping me through it even though i'm really scared right now i know that god will see me through it so you can do that as you're trying to calm down and make sure you're doing some breaths um and and i hope you uh EMT tapping has helped me so much like I'd be in my car like oh ah! like it just it really has helped me a lot and the reason why EFT tapping um helps and why it works is because our body stores trauma um so don't you know when people are like oh you're triggered that's literally like your body like so say for example remember when you clean up in your room and uh, or when you were younger and your mom said you clean up your room you just push everything under the bed and so think about when you don't really fully process your emotions, meaning that you accept it, you look at it, you feel it, and then you let it go. If you don't do that and you just like something happens and you're like, oh, I don't want to feel that right now, I push that down. And so then you go about your day and somebody will do something. It could be a very small thing. And the thing that you push down will come back up. That's what they're, they're saying when it's triggering. And so if you never, if you just spend your whole life pushing down your emotion, pushing down your emotion, you don't want to feel it. What can happen is that these emotions eventually get stored in your body. And then, of course, you know, they weigh down your spirit. And so we do these EFT tappings to kind of as different areas in the body to help move whatever we're... Because when you're triggered, those feelings, everything that happened before is coming up. And so when you tap in, you're helping to release it and to, and to help really transmute it out of your life for good um i really uh use a lot of eft tapping around my money issues um you know my mom is a gambler and so i have very a very complicated well i had a very complicated relationship with money and so uh you know my bank account get to get below a hundred dollars i start freaking out and so eft tapping has really helped me become you know become one with my relationship um, with money okay but we're going to go into this and figure out, dear God, granny angels and ancestors, we thank you for allowing us to connect in this way. Now, God, I just ask, what do you deem worthy for us to hear at this time? What is a good affirmation that we can use in this great time of change? I know that there is a shit ton of stuff going on in the sky right now. We got full moon, we got lunar eclipse, we got Mercury retrograde grades, Venus moving, um, Jupiter moving into Aries. We have a lot going on in the sky. And God, I just ask, what is an uh, affirmation that we can use to just keep us grounded in this time of great change? How can we not get caught up in the bullshit in the world and these old ass white men trying to take us back to the 1960s? In God's name I pray, I shall. 
Like, y'all, I'm so over these white men. Like, die already. <laughs> Just die. Like, so we can start the world over. Uh, I, I really mean that. <laughs> I know I shouldn't say that, but I mean it. All right. <clears throat> I am strong. I am stronger than I think I am. I reject victimhood. My strength is in knowing that all circumstances are temporary. I focus my attention on what is in front of me. I naturally move forward into new phases of my life. I am strong. Um, angel number 527. I constantly tell myself this is circ this this is temporary. This is not my forever. You know, I, I actually had to check myself because I get really frustrated at my job. And I had to tell myself, like, am this, this is people dream jobs. You know, like, <laughs> this is where some people have really worked their whole life. Like, they, this is their end all be all. They don't see themselves leaving. Like, this is their, this is their dream. And so it's like, it's really fucked up for me to come in with the attitude and, you know, of like bel belittling what they're doing or you know, just, I really had to change my attitude and realize like, okay, I am here. This may not be my end all be all, but I can't keep coming in here with this attitude that this is stupid because this is some people end all be all, you know, this is some people dream job. So I just have to come in with the attitude that this, this circumstance is temporary. I'm not going to always be here. It's helping me create my dream company and my dream life. So I constantly tell myself that, especially when people really frustrate me, I'm like, this is temporary. This is not gonna get the best of me. Uh, and you can also say that for yourself. I am stronger than I know I am. I'm stronger than I think I am. And this is this situation that is literally a mantra that you can use. I am stronger than what I think I am. This situation is circumstance. This situation this situation. I am stronger than what I think I am. This situation is temporary and it will not get the best of me. Fuck that. I'm always saying ain't nothing about to get the best of me. Because it ain't. <laughs> Because then I ain't got damn it. I am inspiring. I am inspiring to those around me, even when I don't realize it. When I am welcoming, kind, and giving towards it, it towards people, it inspires them to respond to me in the same way. I am respiring. Angel number seven eleven. And honestly, guys, I can I can I can definitely attest to this. You know, I um even though I don't, you know, care for my job, there are I really love the people that I work with, which is kind of it makes you feel like that's kind of contradictory. It's like I love the people I work with, but I don't care for my job because it's just, anyways. Um, and what I realized is that my personality, like I am like the opposite of everybody at my job. Cause you know, like I'm an accountant. So like everybody is like a typical, but I'm like really a creative person. And so it's like, I don't think the way they think I, I, I'm, I'm have the ability to think outside the box and to think bigger and all of those types of things. And so I'm realizing that you know, even though I don't, you know, I don't, I will never get in a leadership position just because I don't feel like this job deserves me. This company deserves me. They all deserve my talents, my skills. I would rather just use that for myself. But I have realized that because of who I am, how I, how I talk, how I present myself, how I speak up at meetings, that people naturally gravitate towards me. People naturally feel comfortable with me. And honestly, I use that to my advantage. Like I, I, I'm always thinking about, um, you know, I, I'm always thinking about how to make other people comfortable. I lost my thought. I'm 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 done, y'all. I feel like I'm just rambling. Control I delete. I'm done. So with these two cards of I am strong, I am inspiring coming out. For some reason, I'm really getting this message of there's no such thing as a low-key person. This is something that I learned at Hampton University. One of my big sisters, Natalie, taught us this. Um, and it's because like, you know, everybody always thinks like, oh, I'm low key and nobody paying attention to me. But the thing is like, somebody's always watching you. Somebody, even when you don't know it, like people are always watching you. And uh, to give you an example of that, I walk my dog. I do live on like a major street in Detroit and I walk my dog, you know, of course, every morning, every afternoon. And like one day, like this guy, like it was like two or three people were like stopping me. Like, Hey, I see you every morning. <laughs> or like, I, I, they like, I always like check and make sure you're out there or like, you know, and I was like, and the guy was just like, I just want you to know you protected. You got people looking out for you. And I was just like, thank you. So it's like, even when you don't think that people are paying attention to you, there's always somebody paying attention to you. And also, you know, 
a lot of us, uh, if you have kids, like a lot of your kids, like you may say things to them, but your kids is not taking what you say. Your, your kids are actually looking at who you are in the world and they're taking that on and they're using that to become, you know, like they're using that to inform their own decisions. And so it's like, instead of thinking about, oh, I have to make these sacrifices for my kids or I can't live out my dream because I have kids. Why don't you think about how you would actually help your kid you actually like think about yeah it's like we don't ever think about it that way right we never think we are we're, we're always told you know when you have responsibilities when you have kids you have to you know do you have to sacrifice and honestly i feel like that's why like the black family is the way it is because everybody been fucking sacrificing like maybe you don't need the sacrifice maybe our family will be better if we saw mommy and daddy being in the career that made them happy if we saw mommy and daddy being happy on a regular basis versus being resentful and scarred for life because think about it if you were the type of parent right that you know, you, you didn't necessarily, you know, follow your dreams right out of school. But then eventually, you know, you realize that, you know, corporate America isn't for you. But then you went for your dreams despite having a kid. Look at what you're showing your kid. You showing your kid that it's okay to make mistakes. You're showing your kids it's okay to go down one path and to change your mind. You're telling your kid that it's okay to, you know, um, really be who you want to be no matter your age. You're inspiring your kid without even realizing it. You think, oh, well, I'm just going about my dream. I'm being selfish, but you're, you're really doing the best thing that you could ever do for your kid. I feel like so many of us have you know suffered in our childhood because our parents had that mentality our parents had had that that thought process of oh i gotta i gotta sacrifice no nigga go after your dreams like go after it because your kids are learning from who from that i don't know where that came from but it is what it is Woo, child are y'all with me today <laughs> it's 11 55 i feel like i'm all over the place But I do feel like what God is saying that I am strong and I am inspiring because underlying this is understanding that, you know, your, your circumstances are temporary. You are not stuck. You're, you are bigger than what you're going through. And that if you just was every time you find yourself in moments of frustration, this, Oh, thank you, God. So I was like having this moment, right? Where I realized like you really, you really only have right now, right? You, this is, the, there is no such thing as the past because it's already happened. There is no such thing as the future because it hasn't happened yet. And so often, so many of us keep ourselves in positions and in situations that are not comfortable for us because we're thinking about our past or we're thinking about our future instead of thinking about right now. No, I can't go back and change my major. I can't go back and, um, you know, go to California instead of going to school. I can't, I can't reverse time. But what I can do is take all of the tools, every, all of the tools, all of the skills, all of the life lessons that this path has gifted me, take them and use that to get myself closer to my dream. That's the, that's, that's the power that I do have. But so often we think, oh, well, I should have been did that. Or I should, no. If you should have been did it, you would have did it. But the fact that you're thinking it now means that you're stronger than what you realize and that your, cir that your circumstances is temporary. So what you need to do is just go ahead and move in the direction of your dreams. I just feel like all of us, and, and then it's saying like uh, this other card, when I'm welcoming, kind and giving towards people, it inspires people to respond to me in the same way. And so to me, I take that to me when you are, when you take that chance to actually go after your dreams, to actually make that effort to at least try. So many of us don't even try. Then God will respond in the exact same way. Because what you put out in the universe is what you get. So if you're putting out, I'm trying, I'm trying, I want to make this change, then guess what? God is going to meet you and say, you got it, you got it. Here's a little bit to push you, to get you on your way. Angel number 1435. All right, I'm done. 
Um, and I am ambitious. Yeah, this is all about going after your dreams. God really wants you guys to go after your dreams. I put my goals and desires into actions. I take a leap of faith and I believe in myself. When I put my heart's desire into action, it is for the good of all those involved. I am ambitious. You have to realize that we were given these dreams because that dream, that instinct, that that inkling is a part of your life purpose is why you were born on earth. If we really think about it, and that's where it goes back to that message of self-acceptance. If you really think about who you are, why were you put here? Do you really think God just brought us here to suffer, to, to keep marching in the street, talking about equality, to keep having the same fights about Rogue, Rogue versus Way? No, God put you here to be a light worker and to be a voice of change, to push this bitch forward. We get so distracted by all this other stuff, the glamour, the celebrities, the, instead of worrying about what the fuck we're here for. And what we're here for is to live out our dreams and to live our life purpose. And so if you would just remember that and walk in that and know that your, your circumstances are temporary, that you're stronger than what you are, that what you put out into this world that you get back, that your dreams are worthy and, and for the greater good of all, then you, will, you won't feel so... Things won't feel so heavy inside. All right, guys. Clarify this. Give us a tool that we can use. I'm just going to do a tool, and then we're going to go to work your light, and then we're done. Um, I am strong. I am inspiring. I am ambitious. God, what are you trying to get us to understand with this message of I am strong, I am inspiring, I am ambitious? How can we walk in the direction of our dreams? How can we know that our circumstances are our, our circumstances are temporary and that you know our dreams are not just for us, but they're for the greater good of all? Give us just one tool that we can use, allow no rumor, doubt, and confusion. One tool that we can use. I love this. I have the power to direct my own thoughts. So we see this week is all about thoughts this week. And it's, I guess that makes sense because we're in Mercury retrograde and Mercury retrograde rules, you know, um, the mental. And honestly, they say that this is supposed to be a time where we're slowing down, we're processing, we're revising, we're seeing what worked and what didn't work. Actually, angel number 17, I think we should make sure that you do that um sometime this week maybe at the end of this video just take a little moment and just ask yourself how has your year been going how you wanted it to go um are you doing anything that you plan to do have you been sticking to your goals have you been sticking to your routines if so i think that's a good indicator to you know keep going along that path if not this is a good time to sit back revise and figure out how to move forward your thoughts do create the reality that you live and one of the most exciting things about beginning the process of deliberately focused thought is that the law of attraction will bring you evidence of your improved thought immediately. And so um, in the other message, I was saying how when you know that you're moving in the right direction, like you'll get evidence of that. It's like a God. Yes. It's like um, I was going back and forth about whether I should do tarot for a very, very long time. And in the first day, the first month that I'm like, OK, I started a new year. I'm like, OK, I'm going to do tarot. First time I put it out there, I got a customer. I got a client right away. And so that's how I knew, yes, this is the path for me. Now, granted, it's been slow as fuck since then, but I had to remind myself that, you know, I got all, I asked God, I didn't just jump in this. So this is clearly something he wants me to do. And I just have to be obedient and just trust that, you know, just see it through no matter where it leads me. And that's where we have to realize we have to start overriding a lot our ego mind because our ego tells us well what, what why are you doing these videos only five people are looking at them why are you wasting your time why are you but it's like because god told me to do this it's something inside of me that's telling me this is what i should do and so i'm going to do it and when i go back to this message of i am inspiring angel number 1845 i think that god has me doing this because he's like you need to just you know i spent so much of my life not speaking my truth and I, and I remember I would, there was just like this one moment, this one like part of my like uh, process where like maybe two or three years ago where God was just like forcing me to say all this shit out loud. Like admit that you want to be famous. Admit that you want to be a billionaire. Admit that you want to meet JMB. Admit that you want to be in this mega, you know, uh, relationship. Admit that you want to have it all. And I'm like, 
I do want to have it all. You know, like, it's like, God was just like, admit it. Because the problem is we don't admit that shit out loud. We shame ourselves for it. And because we don't admit it, because of the shame, that's why we don't have it. That's why it keeps us away. It's not because we're not worthy of it. It's because of our own thought process, our own feelings for it. So that's why God is saying it's so empower. It's so empowerful. <laughs> it's so empowerful. Is that even a word? It's so powerful. For you to know that you have control over this. So many of us are putting limitations in our mind because of what our society said or even what the fuck Oprah said. But it's like, bitch, we are not of that generation. We don't have to be like, oh, I got to be rich. I got to be career driven or I got to be family oriented. Like B J and B has proven that wrong. You can't have it all. It's on you to figure out how you're going to structure and balance it all, but you can have it all. And so if you want it all, if you want to have an amazing relationship, a big, a big, amazing career, you want to be ambitious, you want to, you want to do all these things, you want to help save the world, and you also want to be a really great mama, guess what, boo? You can do that. You don't have to choose. So stop shaming yourself. Stop, stop. You want what the fuck you want. Stop shaming yourself for what you want. Don't let nobody shame you for what you want. Nothing that you want is realistic, unrealistic. I remember I told somebody, I want to be with a, I want to be with a rapper. And it was like, why you say that? Oh, this world got everybody thinking everybody want to be a rapper. Why you want to be with a rapper? I'm like, because they have fun. I love rap. I want to be on video. <laughs> it's like, I want to be with a rapper. Like, nigga, don't fucking shame me because I want to be with a rapper. And it's like, oh, but well, you can't be with no dude that work at UP. Like, no, probably not for the lifestyle that I want to live. I want to be with a rapper. Don't fucking shame me. Nigga, Jay-Z is my fucking superhero. Why, who else the fuck could I be with? I can't go fucking be with a dentist. <laughs> you want what the fuck you want. And it's valid. Period. <sighs> and one of the most exciting things about beginning the process of deliberately focused thought is that the law of attraction will immediately bring you evidence of your approved thought process and while old patterns may be hard to break and you may slip back into old patterns from time to time evidence of your effort will be undeniable to you and so like what I was telling y'all like about my trip to Vegas and even honestly my trip to like to here like as soon as I got on the plane mind you ev the plane was full of Every row on that plane had people on it except for mine. I was the only person on the plane that had a whole world to myself. God. You know, like, I'm like, God. Like, it's just God. And, it's just me. and I know that you're like, that's so small. But that's why I'm, if you really believe, like, you, you, can't, you can't live your life thinking that every day is going to be some fucking Harry Potter, you know, wizarding shit going to happen. God is so fucking subtle. And if you ain't paying attention, you're going to miss it. You know, people say it all the time. There's signs everywhere. The, the, I, this is my saying. They, you know, it, it's signs everywhere. You just happen to notice this one. It ain't that they, it ain't that, that, that the universe haven't been giving you signs. God been giving you signs since you've been, uh, been alive. But you're just not on that frequency to receive it. I remember one time I walked into an elevator, an elevator in my building at work. And they were talking about forgiving your parents in the midst of me not talking to my parents. Like I had, cause I was just so hurt and I cut my parents. I didn't want to talk to them. And I walked into the elevator and a guy was talking to, you know, his coworker about, you know, forgiving your parents, talking to your parents. And he was like, I just forgave my parents, my dad. And he died two weeks later. You can't deny shit like that. I, I literally just walked into this conversation. Like, it wasn't like they started. I walked on an elevator and this was the conversation. And that's what was going on in my life. So you mean to tell me that that's a coincidence? You mean to tell me that just happened to happen? No, it's God. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, God is everywhere. God is in the little everyday conversation. God is in the God is in the thing of where, you, you know, your check randomly happened to come a day before. It's actually supposed to be deposited. That's God. When you pull into a, a crowded ass mall parking lot and then somebody just happened to be pulling out at a top side as soon as you pull in there. That's God. You need to start acknowledging that shit.
And before long, with much less effort than you spend trying to dodge negative conversation or train others into better behavior, all your all your um, relationships will improve. And this is just understanding that we you have to realize you don't have control over a goddamn. You don't have control over nobody. Not even your damn dog. Y'all, one time, Cuddy was... <laughs> me and Cuddy was in here. Mind you, I have a one-bedroom apartment. It's about three or four rooms in here. Ain't nowhere for Cuddy to fucking go. But do you know, I happen to, later on that night, I we, I, you know, I, after I get off work, and I'm taking Cuddy outside, and I notice he got this cut on his head, and I'm just like, where the hell did he get this cut on his head? Like, you know, we go on our walk, come back into my room, my fucking drawer on my, because I have like this glass dr uh, dresser, it was broke. My bottom one was broke, and I'm just like, what the fuck happened? Mind you, I'm in the house. And so it was like, I just realized, I'm like, damn, like, I don't even, like, even Cuddy, even my dog has his own life. He has his own things that he's been through that I don't even know about. Mind you, and he needs me to feed him to walk him on, and he still has his own life. So I just say that to say that you don't have control over a goddamn thing, over nobody. So don't waste your energy trying to control nobody. You All you can control is yourself. All you control is your thoughts. All you can control is how you choose to react to certain situations. And if you would just remember that, your fucking boss don't have control over your life. Your fucking, your, your boss, your employer is God, G-O-D. That's the only motherfucker you can answer to. That's the only motherfucker that is going to determine your wealth, your your in, 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 or your poor or your poverty level. That's the only person. Not these white men in fucking Congress. Not these white motherfuckers on the Senate. Not even the black bitch that's on the Supreme Court justice. Nobody controls your life but God. And so when you start getting into conversation with him, all of this other shit is trivial. It's trivial. Because you know who's the ultimate boss. You know who you're ultimately answering to. And so it's like, maybe that's how we should change our mindset. Instead of worrying about, oh, is this the right thing to do? I am an ascension of source energy. Remember, I started this whole thing off with saying, you are God. You are God. You came as a physical ascension of source energy. Understanding that you would explore contrast. So remember, the contrast is what you don't want. This is the thing, the whole purpose why the world was created, why we're in this fucking simulation is because God realized, oh, I'm God. I'm just God. But what else could I be? I want to be a good guy. I want to be a bad guy. I want to be an evil God. I want to be a joyful God. I want to be a trickster God. Like, and that's when the fucking world started creating because God was like, this is boring. <laughs> I need some contrast. I need to, you have to, you have to know what you don't want to know what you do want, right? So that's why we're in this world. That's why we are in this world where duality rules, where you're always going to see the good and the evil. It's always going to be balanced. We live in a balanced universe. So as many, as many as there, I feel like I'm a worker of light. There are workers of darkness. Okay. Get that in your mind. Um, causing expansion, not only for you, but for all that is, you knew that you could find your way back to sources, to sources of your source by filling your way. And by understanding that the relationship between you and you is not that one of separateness, but of alignment and resonance. When you master the art of allowing your constant alignment with source within you, every relationship will be beneficial and pleasure. It says when you master the art of allowing your consistent alignment with source within you. So remember, all you, the only God that you need to answer to is your God, which is the God that's within you. And the way that you know that if you're doing the right thing or the wrong thing is that how does it feel to you? It's really easy, right? Everything is so much more simpler when you realize that, oh, I, I'm an extension of source. Oh, I can, this is how it's going to relate. You are baby God. God created you. The reason why your life isn't changing is because you're waiting for some force outside of you, some magical person to step in and to help you. But it only starts changing when you change. You are that source. You are the one who gets going. Once you start, God comes to assist you. It's a co-creation process. Right now, you're just yelling at God, like, God, help me, God. Why are you not doing this? Why are you not doing this? And God is just like, but, but, but you just sitting on your ass. <laughs> it's like y'all asking God to do 
shit you won't even do. How that work? How that work? It don't. It don't. It don't work. All right. So let's just, I'm going to end this message this way. What fortune comes to us if we know that we are stronger than what we realize, that we are inspiring, that it's okay to be ambitious? What if today, from this moment forward, we take control of our thoughts? We learn how to direct our own thoughts. We only focus on what makes us feel good. We only, and when we do have those moments of contrast, we add, we acknowledge it and then move in the direction of what we actually want. What happens to us if we realize we are strong and ambitious? Reflection, friendships in your life may come to an end. Others could blossom and become stronger. Uh, this makes sense. Uh, I think I started this off by saying that we're in Mercury retrograde. This is the time to reflect, revise, and plan. And so what God is saying now is the time, instead of you know being a victim, instead of being like, you know, this person is treating me shitty. This person isn't nice to me. God is asking you, why are you allowing that into your life? Now is the time for you to make those big decisions about your friend groups, about are, are they in alignment with who you ultimately need to be? And if not, you know, gracefully, remember, we're not shaming, we're not judging, but gracefully move in the direction of your dreams and wish those people well. But you have to take care of yourself. You have to make sure that you are on the right path. And so uh, it may be a little bit lonely. We have video, I have a video on here about for when you're lonely. Um, but eventually God is going to bring the people who for you because you're in alignment with your source and in alignment with who you really are. Um, the last thing is friendship. And I love this. So look, God is saying you may lose some friends, but ultimately you're going to get friends. You're going to get greater friends. And I feel like the, the friend is God. He's the greatest friend you could ever have. But he will ultimately bring people in here. A friend needs your help, your kindness, and excellent counseling skill will put them back on track. And so um, also, I feel like God is saying, ask yourself, have you been a good friend? You know, um, recently on this last Sunday episode of um, on uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta, you know, Marlo was talking about how she wished that Candy would be a better friend to her. And Candy was like, you got to be a friend to get a friend, you know? So just also make sure that um what you're putting out into the world your what you want from the world that you're also putting it out there the very last thing if you recognize that you are strong that you are ascension of god that you have the power within you to create your own thoughts god is saying a beautiful opportunity will come into come to you um important offer will be made be prepared to dress and impress okay all right y'all that is all the messages i have for you if you made it to the end of this please give me a thumbs up angel number 3230 if you made it to the end of this and you are not subscribed what the fuck are you waiting for until we meet again dream those dreams don't let the internet rush you and never ever ever let someone tell you what you cannot do all right see you soon